Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So my name is Liz Myers, I am 21 years old. I am at the University of Birmingham studying mechanical engineering and I'm in my second year. I'm very involved with uh, the Formula student team at the university called UB Racing. As of next year, my third year, I will be uh, the lead vehicle dynamics engineer for the team. The reason why I haven't been recording as much uh, since my last video was because I got really involved in UB racing over the summer. I wasn't really able to record much of the stuff that we did building the car, so it left me very little stuff to record during that period of time. As I've just finished my second year, sort of, I mean, we're still waiting for the last piece of work in quarantine, uh, I thought I'd do a video that a lot of you guys had requested, um, which is just a feedback for mechanical engineering students or just other engineers, such as electrical engineers, civil engineers. It can be used for any subject that takes labs as well. I think the same advice can be applied um, to you guys. So. The first bit of advice I'm going to give you guys is not to buy books. Um, I fell into this trap last year at the beginning of first year. I just bought a lot of the books that all the lecturers were recommending. You can find everything you need online. I think the best thing to do is just to wait what the lecturer recommends you and if they recommend you certain textbooks and they say you've got to have this, look online first. If they don't have it there, check the library. If you just then can't find it anywhere then you can obviously go ahead and buy the books but they're not cheap. They could be from like £40 to £80 uh, textbooks so it's just not worth buying. The second thing I was going to say is not to miss lectures. I know it's way easier said than done to not just not miss your lectures but say you're just tired you will fall into the trap of them stacking up and then you realising at the end of the year there's a lot of material you have to cover. If you can at least cover the stuff once initially um, in all the lectures then when it comes to the end of the year and you're just recapping all of the stuff it's such an easier job than having to learn a lot of the stuff over from scratch. Okay so the third one I was going to talk about is when you're in your lectures, it's really easy to start writing everything that lecturers say um, and not be very efficient with what you're doing. And for half of the lecture, you realise you don't even know what the lecturer is talking about because you were just writing as quick as you could to get everything the person was saying down. It's very likely the lecture will be put online. If it's not, then uh, maybe if you're allowed to record it, I don't know, check with the lecturer. I'm not sure if you're allowed to do that. But what I do is I just sort of write the main points um, that, you, that the lecturer goes through. And when I'm out of the lecture, I'll then look into the stuff more. And another really important thing that I would do is before you go into your lecture, prepare for the lecture as much as you can as well. So whether that means just spending half an hour reading up on the material that you already have an idea of what is going on about, which means when you're getting a lot more out of that lecture than you would have otherwise. Next thing I was going to say is lab reports. This applies to I guess any sort of science student slash engineer. Last year I got around like 70 something percent and this year uh, last the last report I got 88% in so it stepped up quite a lot and the reason for that was because I started earlier like that's the main bit of advice I would give you guys start early with lab reports because yeah it's so easy to just you know smash it out in two days hand it in on the deadline day just if you can start it a couple weeks early you get you know a couple days to actually write the thing up and then you get another couple days to actually read it through and make sure that it's the best you can make it you can then be extra keen and take it to different lecturers and get them to give you their feedback on it the next thing I'd recommend is um, making yourself known to your lecturer. Highly recommend just going along to your lecturer's office or sending them an email, um, introducing yourself and saying, you know, I found this part of your lecture interesting. Can you explain how this actually worked? I don't know who is screaming in the garage. I think it's my brother. <laughs> if you guys can, you know, bring them some questions that you have on some of the um, tutorials or just some questions about the lecture, um, they would probably appreciate that. And they see that you're interested in their material and they'll, they'll remember you for being quite enthusiastic about their course. You could get to the end of the year and obviously everyone needs their help with questions and stuff. Um, and they're gonna not, they're gonna end up probably just ignoring a lot of the people that they barely know and they'll end up replying and saying yeah come and ask your questions the people they know have been consistently uh, keen throughout the year. So the next thing I why is this so bright? So the next thing I would say is distractions. Now obviously in first year still get a good grade but take part in whatever you want as many societies as you can because that's the year that you really can it doesn't most universities I know it doesn't count towards their final grade so in second year I think it gets a bit more serious to get less distracted. Um, this especially applies to when you know things get a bit more busy you've got numerous deadlines uh, coming up and you're working on different group projects and that's the time when you've really got to just say 
I'm gonna work on this stuff and once that's done, I'll go out and see everyone and do whatever. Or at least prioritize the work that you have due in. I'd also recommend if you're gonna get involved in a society like Formula Student, 100% get involved, do what you gotta do. But just remember that it's equally important to get enough exercise and to prioritize spending a bit of time outside of those societies to just to just have a good mental well-being and to make sure that you, you know, are getting the most that you can out of your university experience. So with societies, um, such as Formula Students, it takes up a lot of time, just make sure to not forget about your studies as well, because it's really easy to fall in the path of missing every single lecture and then thinking, you know, oh, you'll catch up with it later. Um, for example, after the first semester, I spent a lot of time doing UB Racing stuff. Like there were a few days I'd, I'd miss out of uni to just, you know, do UB Racing stuff, which is fine, but I just sort of expected that a lot of the lectures I'd miss, I'd catch up with over Christmas. And that meant over Christmas, I spent about two weeks straight going through the stuff that so if you can try to get through the stuff that you're missing as well as continuing with the stuff that you're doing. Another thing I'd say is don't be scared to work with people. This was something really big for me because all the way through school and whatever I, I, I just never worked with people. I couldn't focus because I'd always, I'm just the worst when it comes to getting distracted. But Actually, when I went to uni, I realized there was a lot of things that would take me a long time to understand, um, which took other people not that long to understand. And if you can be sat with people, you know, learning stuff, going through questions, and uh, you spend maybe an hour trying to figure out the answer to a question, you know, you're spending an hour trying to understand a concept, um, but someone across the table from you, like one of your friends, explains it to you in five minutes and that's just what gets, you know, that's what makes you understand it, then you're saving yourself so much time, you're making your revision so much more efficient by just ans asking that question, being like, do you understand how this works? It, can you explain it to me? And that saves you, what, an hour per, per concept that you're confused about. It's just hugely beneficial. I, I used to think, if I'm with people, won't get any work done, but it's just completely wrong. When I started working with people, it started making things a lot quicker. It'll be a much more enjoyable and efficient experience. The next thing I was gonna say is working in groups. Be expected to end up having to do a lot of it yourself. This can be really hard because you can, you know, have to balance six people's amount of work uh, on your shoulders as well as, you know, all the other modules. If you get in a situation where a lot of the people in your lab group aren't doing much, I'd probably speak to one of the module coordinators early on so that they're you know become aware of the problem that's happening. I know a lot of unis do a peer review thing so if you do let the lecturers know you'll get the higher percentage mark. If you don't let them know early on you may not be granted that so if you do feel like you're you know unfairly doing a lot of the work you probably will end getting a higher grade but just let the lecturers know early on and show some evidence of that if you can as well. I've moved you again because the light keeps moving and I don't really want lines all over me. Last piece of advice as I would tell you is CAD, computer aided design. When you come to the uni you'll get licenses for different softwares and if you haven't got enough space on your laptop you just won't be able to put it on. If you've got Macs you should be prepared to boot camp them which means you can set up a Windows side as well as a Mac side as well as an Apple side. So uh, that means you can run the different softwares on the, on the Windows side of your Mac. But if you've already got a Windows laptop, then just make sure you can free up enough space. So different softwares we get is like SolidWorks. Okay, so SolidWorks is 16 gigabytes. Another one we use is MATLAB, is 26 gigabytes of disk space. And if you can get enough space in your laptop before joining uni, you're making your life a lot easier. So one more thing I'm gonna mention is work experience. Um, I don't think this is crucial for people in first year, but it was really hard to find work experience for first year, mainly because not many places want people that are first years because you haven't got enough of the skills that pe places usually want. If you can get something hands-on to give you some actual f practical experience, um, that will put you in a much better position for when you start your second year. I completely appreciate that it's really hard to get it um, in your fewer first year, but if you can try and source some, whether it's just a small bit of um, work experience, it would really benefit you in, in getting ready for second year and probably in adding to you know, when you go to apply for places in second year. Because of the coronavirus situation, I haven't been able to go on the work experience that I had organized this summer. So, so if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and message me for anything else that you guys are interested in. I know a lot of you guys have been interested in getting some advice for what it's like to be an, an engineering student. These are the main things I've sort of picked up on the last year or two. And I wish someone had told me these things before I started um, my year. So thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.